Well, good evening, dear friends and members of the Gideon Planetarium Observatory. Welcome to another online science cafe, Tuesday, the 26th of September. And we have a very special guest today, Svetlana Garcina. She's the owner of uh, Russi Cray uh, online magazine and also newspaper. She's a writer, interpreter, translator, passionate linguist, and a language explorer. She's also a short story writer and an experienced uh, post processor So uh, we're, we were always looking for your participation uh, to this event. She's going to talk to us about cosmonauts, actually cosmonauts from the region. Uh, the, the, the title of this uh, sci online science cafe is Compatriots of Interplanetary Significance. And she's going to talk about cosmonauts Yuri Romanenko, Roman Romanenko and Gennady Manakov. Uh, Svetlana, thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to uh, welcome you again and uh, thank you in public for your uh, contribution and support to our Science Center. Uh, she's um, our uh, one of our media sponsors, together with uh, Classic 99 FM. Uh, they are, she's our media sponsor, and I would really, really love, like again to thank you in public. It's a great honor and also a great help and support to our Science Center. Thank you very, very much. So the stage is yours. We are looking forward to Svetlana to hear about your uh, beloved uh, compatriots as well. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yes, of course. Okay. Thank you, George, for giving me the opportunity to take part in today's event. And I really appreciate this. Quite delighted to share some information about my compatriots, as I called my um, presentation of interplanetary significance, and to provide some interesting material about them in front of uh, the English-speaking audience. Uh, I would like to say a couple of words about myself. Uh, I'm originally coming from Russia, from the town of Bozolo, Korenberg region, which is uh, about 1,000 kilometers away from Moscow, southeast, on border to Kazakhstan, the Ural Mountains area. So um, I have uh, two bachelor's degree. One is in the foreign languages, and I... As it has been already mentioned, I'm a really passionate linguist. I've been involved as interpreter and a translator in oil patch in different gas projects, uh, oil projects, geology, and uh, operations of drilling. Uh, when we moved to Cyprus in 2015, I uh, enrolled uh, at the Alexander College here in Paphos to get my master's degree in business management. And I graduated in 2017 with honors. So uh, I continued my uh, major activity and picked up some uh, more different uh, hobbies, including tennis, uh, running, and uh, taking part in different um, uh, conferences where we share different uh, literature, Russian language, and uh, history uh, heritage. And uh, from uh, recently, just I deal with the <laughs> space projects as well. So two years I've been running the Russian paper for the uh, Russian speaking community here uh, in Ireland, just uh, to keep the bridges with our homeland. So today I'm quite delighted to share some information about uh, three cosmonauts uh, who were born at uh, the same place uh, as myself. I have chosen the name of my presentation as compatriots uh, one of the English-speaking friends of mine asked me a question, so why not Yuri Gagarin? So, uh, compatriots in this case means people coming from the same place where I am, the, the little town, uh, the regional town of Russia. So, Yuri uh, Romanenko was born on uh, August 1st, 1944. So, next year he's going to celebrate his anniversary, and I, I'm sure that there will be a lot of celebration uh, hosted in our town, where he's an honored guest, always. So uh, he has a lot of high-ranked awards, uh, and here on this slide you can see uh, two of them. 
hero of the Soviet Union and the hero of uh, Republic of Cuba. So uh, after his second uh, space mission, uh, he got uh, the award of the hero of Republic of Cuba because he was flying with a Cuban cosmonaut. So he spent uh, 430 days and 18 hours in space in total. So he accomplished successfully several missions and retired in 1988. If you go to the next slide, you will see several pictures uh, which were taken by myself in the village next to my uh, hometown. Uh, the upper right picture shows his house. Uh, the bottom right shows uh, the picture made by one of the famous local artists. And the central picture shows the plate, the board, which is placed on the front of the house saying that here, uh, the cosmonaut, uh, the hero of the USSR, was born. If you go to the next slide, it's about the early years of uh, his life. So the pictures on the right also not very perfect because they were taken uh, by myself in the local museum just to share with the audience. They're very rare. So, I mean, you can not find them in the internet. So... Uh, his father was a commander on the military ships and his mother was a combat medic. Then the family um, moved to Kaliningrad, which is the most western point of Russia, where he graduated from school in uh, 1961. Uh, from his early childhood, he liked uh, modeling aircraft and ships. He loved boxing, shooting and underwater fishing. So after school, he even managed to work as a locksmith and a builder. And then in 1962, he enrolled at the Chernigov High Air Force School in Ukraine and graduated with honors in 1966. After he graduated from this school, he remained with it and uh, continued training students and practicing himself as a candidate cosmonaut. So he cleared for space flights in 1970 among only 16 other cosmonauts. That was quite a rare event at those times. And uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, there is some information about uh, three space missions of his. So his first flight uh, was in December 1977. So it was a two-man crew consisted of uh, himself as a commander of the flights and George, Georg, uh, in Russian, Georgi Grechko, uh, George Grechko as an engineer. So they spent 96 days and 10 hours on the orbit. And uh, that was quite a successful mission uh, during which uh, Romanenko performed a one and a half hour long spacewalk. As I mentioned in his second uh, mission in 1980, um, which was made together with a Cuban cosmonaut who actually turned out to be the first uh, Hispanophone of the African descent uh, in the space. And after this flight, uh, he was awarded uh, of a high rank title, the hero of the Republic of Cuba. And when he retired uh, in 1988, his family was um, invited by the leader of Cuba Fidel Castro, uh, and, uh, for he knew that Romanian likes underwater uh, fishing, so he arranged for him um, this session and also took part in the free diving with him. But coming back to the third mission um, and the last flight of his, uh, uh, that was in uh, 1987, so 10 years later after his first space mission. So uh, he conducted three spacewalks uh, during this mission on uh, on April 11th, June 11th, and June 16th, 1987, with a total duration of 8 hours, 48 minutes. So Romanenko retired uh, in uh, 1988, as I mentioned, and uh, he became the director of the Buran program, which is uh, the alternative to the space shuttle. So the program completed one flight in 1988 and then was canceled in 1993. 
And actually, on this slide, you can see uh, even the uh, stamp issued uh, devoted to this uh, first space missions of himself and his engineer. So the next slide shows the awards of Yuri Romanenko during his uh, career, where there are the national ones and received from the foreign states as well. Now, um, here we can name uh, some of them. Twice here of the Soviet Union, pilot cosmonaut, medal for the merit in space exploration, uh, awards from uh, Czechoslovak Socialist Republic, uh, from Bulgaria. And on the right, you can see uh, the picture made by myself uh, in the local museum, where all the items are real, and they were originally used uh, during those space missions and donated by Yuri Romanenko to the museum, and so that they are well kept and cherished for future generations in there. If you go to the next slide, <clears throat> This slide shows a couple of pictures, uh, uh, actually three pictures, but the first one on the left, it's a school uh, which I graduated from, and uh, it was transformed from the public school into gymnasium and was named after Yuri Ramanyanka, where he is an honored guest uh, at the events uh, hosted by school or gymnasium. And uh, in our town, in the central square, there is a bust uh, or the monument installed um, in 1983. So where uh, Yuri Gagarin is his space suit. And on the very right, you can see uh, the lyrics of the song devoted to Romanenko by his compatriots. And also this picture was, uh, the original of the lyrics was made um, in the local museum. So if you go to the next slide, uh, you would see uh, him, Yuri Romanenko with his son, Roman Romanenko, who took his father's steps and also became a cosmonaut. And uh, Roman, uh, in his interview later on, would say that he was not planning to become a cosmonaut, but uh, first of all, uh, uh, some kind of uh, military qualification, but then uh, advanced himself to cosmonaut. So if you go to the next slide, you would see. Um, he was born um, in Moscow area, and although he is not uh, my uh, hometown mate, I would say, but his name is closely connected uh, with our town because as well as his father, he is an honored citizen and a welcome guest in there. So he was born on August 9th, 1971. He graduated his secondary school uh, in the Star City, which is Zvyozny uh, Gradok in Russian, where most of the cosmonauts are based, which is uh, subordinate to uh, the Minister of Defense and Roscosmos. So he spent 333 days, 11 hours and one minute in total in space and took part uh, in several uh, space missions. So he was selected as a cosmonaut candidate at uh, the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, just in the Star City uh, in December, 1997. So it took him two years to go through the training course. And in November, 1999, he was qualified as a test cosmonaut. So he took part uh, in um, several expeditions and one of them was expedition 2021. So on May uh, 27th, 2009, Roman Romanenko was launched into space as a commander of Soyuz TMA-15 spacecraft from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. So he was a part of the Expedition 20 and Expedition 21 crews. So after spending 187 days and 20 hours, so he returned to the Earth uh, with two other cosmonauts uh, from Canada and Belgium. So Robert Thrisk is a Canadian cosmonaut, Frank Dewine is a Belgian one. 
So if you go to slide 13, I think. Because I changed them uh, in places. Of, yes, this one. So this one shows three pictures. Uh, in summer 2019, uh, I went to Kuwait City. And we happen to be in the Kuwait Scientific Center. And there is a big area devoted to space exploration. And I found uh, the imitation of the crew expedition 20 and was quite delighted to see the tag with uh, Roman's name uh, on his space suit. So from left to right, you would see, or from bottom up, you would see all the members of the Expedition 20 crew. So if you go back to the uh, previous slide, I think, yeah. So that was Expedition uh, 2021. So the next expedition was uh, 34, 35, during which uh, he made his spacewalk. So this would be Yes, this slide. Uh -huh. So, which was um, on December 19th, 2012. So, he was launched uh, to space on Soyuz TMA 7, um, along with Chris Hadfeld and Thomas Marshburn. So, he was a part of the crews of Expedition 34 and Expedition 35 aboard the International Space Station. So, he served as a flight engineer. So he returned to the Earth, spending 145 days and 14 hours in space. But his first uh, spacewalk was during uh, the Expedition uh, 35. So his uh, first spacewalk was uh, completed uh, successfully together with, uh, with uh, his fellow cosmonaut Pavel Vinogradov and with a total time of 6 hours and 38 minutes when they tried to conduct some repairs to the International Space Station. So the next slide uh, has some links and they're all in Russian, but uh, they can give you the understanding um, without any uh, uh, language barrier. You can see uh, what they do in uh, on um, board of a space station, uh, what they eat, how they sleep, uh, how they experience the zero gravity. So the first link um, is the interview of Yuri Romanenko and Georgi Grechko when they discussed uh, their space mission in 1978. The second link uh, was the interview with uh, Yuri Romanenko back in uh, his hometown of Pozoluk in Nuremberg region of last year. And um, the most significant piece which I picked up from this uh, um, interview was that um, looking back into his uh, career, he told a f uh, quite a funny story that uh, being on board of the space station, he took uh, the telescope uh, and he was trying to find his own village uh, where he used uh, to go fishing when he was a little child. So, and the third one is the interview and the story, actually the story uh, about Roman Romanenko, how he uh, became cosmonaut, a cosmonaut in uh, interview with him. So he shares all his experience of what it is to be a commander of the crew and how to manage so many things that are so different than on the Earth. And um, the third cosmonaut, which uh, whose name I discovered um, quite recently when I was uh, doing some other articles uh, for my newspaper, and accidentally I found discovered his name for myself. And I was quite delighted that again, uh, the place where I'm from has given this outstanding person who contributed a lot and became uh, a person of the interplanetary uh, significance to the whole planet. 
So he was born in a very small uh, village on uh, June 1st, 1950. Unfortunately, he passed away 1999, four years ago. And if you uh, look at the dates, that's 26th of September. And I found it uh, quite uh, interesting. So we're doing this presentation today and it's a good contribution uh, to a tribute to commemorate uh, this person who contributed a lot uh, into the space exploration. So he also has a lot of uh, significant awards and um, he spent almost 310 hours in space and made three spacewalks. For these three spacewalks, he got uh, a special award from uh, Alexei Leonov himself. So if you go to the next slide, um, these would show you the place, the birthplace of the cosmonaut, very small village, which shows uh, his house in uh, plates on the front side of the house, again, to demonstrate that the, an outstanding person was born in there. Three years ago, um, in that village, uh, the monument uh, to the cosmonaut um, was installed in there. They're trying to uh, attract tourists to this place and share this um, outstanding story to uh, visitors and the residents of the area. I haven't been to uh, uh, the museum of this village in this village yet, but uh, I'm quite excited and I would provide more interesting materials, um, whatever they have in there to explore and uh, just share it with you guys as well in the future. And on the next slide, uh, you would see uh, Soyuz TM-10 crew where uh, Gennady was um, in the prime crew. He also, uh, at the very beginning of his career, he was uh, serving as a backup crew. So um, he uh, was excluded uh, from the list of the cosmonauts uh, in 1996 due to the health problems. And then he retired completely in 2000. But uh, his contribution into the uh, space exploration can hardly be underestimated oh, oh, and oh, overestimated. <laughs> so uh, what I wanted to say with this presentation is it doesn't matter uh, where you come from, but what you do uh, just to make uh, yourself, uh, your place and the planet, our planet, our home planet better. So this is it. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. It was a very nice presentation, Lana. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really touching. If you thank see, you. Uh, how things uh, evolved and the technologies and so on. And if you see, you know, those romantic times of space exploration with all these difficulties with not so much, much technology. I mean, Jim, I mean, uh, Jim maybe is a, uh, expert in this, he could tell us a lot about this kind of technologies. He yes. uh, used to work for NASA JPL, uh, so he contributed into many missions. So it's really, really touching and uh, impressive. And it's good that uh, the government is coming back and to one of these people and build these monuments there because uh, they for every, any of their journey, they, they used to risk their lives. I mean, with more possibility than the today's astronaut, I, I believe. Yeah. So, any questions, guys? I have a question about the, the um, museum that you found in the, was it in the Gulf states? I forget which country you said it was with with the three Kuwait. astronauts. Kuwait. Sorry, Kuwait. 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 Yeah, I was just curious why they would build a museum there. Um, 
it's a big scientific center and one of the sections is completely devoted to space in there and you can see different uh space shuttles in there uh like you see on the picture it's soviet union then a canadian uh spacecraft and um so something else and there are a lot of uh, interactive um Mm, shuttles in there where children and adults can uh, play and imagine themselves being inside the spacecraft. It's so interactive, so um, developed and advanced. So you find yourself as if you're inside uh, the spacecraft. And it's so amazing that I turned into a child being in there and just jumping from one place to another, pushing the buttons and just trying. Uh, and when I saw Roman's name tag, uh, in the imitation of the crew, I said, "Wow, I have to make this picture." <laughs> I think it, I think that was held uh, in a couple of years ago. International Space for Space uh, um, Conference. I think two or three years ago in Kuwait. I thought it was Saudi Arabia, but maybe Saudi Arabia, but or, or Kuwait. I'm not sure. Maybe they built it for that reason. They kept it, but I'm not sure. 100% sure. But it's good to empower people, to encourage them to come to this uh, field. And uh, uh, if we add on to this uh, 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 presentation, if you see my background, uh, we celebrate World Space Week next month uh, between the 4th and the 10th of October. And the theme this year is space and entrepreneurship. I'm sure Panis Geri, my friend, is an entrepreneur and he's also consulting new uh, people for startups. And uh, it's really interesting for him as well, the celebration this year. So uh, me as a national coordinator for World Space Week for Cyprus, uh, United Nations World Space Week, um, uh, we are, uh, I will announce tonight the events uh, for uh, World Space Week. And related to our speech, also this uh, this event will also uh, provide uh, empowerment to new people to enter this field and entrepreneurs, and um, encourage them to join science and space exploration. So uh, let me share my screen as well. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the official site uh, for the United Nations World Space Week for Cyprus. I think you, you can see it. Yeah. Okay. Here you can find the posters and the links to the events. So this will be included in the events. We are allowed to have this motivation uh, from, so, uh, from the time we celebrate the World Space Week. And uh, the official inauguration will be held on uh, on the 4th, on Wednesday, uh, 4th of October. We will have as a special guest the um, director of the Space uh, Agency in Krago, of the uh, Analog Astronaut Training Center, and also and two Analog Astronauts. Uh, uh, one was with us uh, at, uh, today, uh, Evandros Teosiu. The other one is my son, Gustandinos Trujas. Uh, two of the people that they did a lot of work there, and uh, um, Evandros did uh, a lot of missions, also as a um, commander, and uh, Osandinos took the initiative to do, for the first time ever, uh, a solo mission in that uh, uh, habitat. It was a combination of the ISS and the Mars habitat as well. They will tell us all about it uh, next uh, week. And uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, Gideon Planetarium Observatory will be co-hosting with the IMS Private School in Nimasol and the Rotary Cosmos, um, the NASA Space Apps for Cyprus, NASA Space Apps Limassol. Three of our scientists, me, Alexander, Prokofiev and Gaderini uh, Dimitri will be the judges for NASA Space Apps. Um, anyone is invited, you can join with your own team or you can come as a guest. We'd be more than happy to uh, um, to host you and show you around. 
we will be mentoring the children the first day or the grown-ups because if anyone can, jo can join uh, from 9 to 11.30. Uh, 12 o'clock we have a break after they eat. They will stay uh, on the premises and we will continue next day. By 7 o'clock we will collect all the projects and we will be judging and by midnight we will submit the projects to NASA, uh, the best two projects. And uh, on Tuesday, we will have the closing ceremony, space and entrepreneurship again. Uh, we will do here the event, uh, the Gideon Planetarium Observatory with telescope observations as well. And uh, it's going to be um, open to the general public. Um, we can read about uh, all the events here and uh, a few uh, posters, uh, what is space and uh, what is a space uh, entrepreneur, uh, space startup success stories, space entrepreneurship, space exploration, some more satellite revolution. Although now European Space Agency is not from giving any funding to any uh, CubeSats, we were talking the last PEX call in Cyprus. We will have the European Space Agency meeting uh, uh, at the end of October, so we will see if something changed <laughs> according to that. Um, they want to give money for something more serious and uh, more show more collaboration between countries. And um, as you see, we celebrate uh, between the 4th of October and the 10th of October. The reason is that 4th of October 1957 was the launch of the first human uh, satellite, uh, Sputnik Adin, Sputnik 1. Uh, so this was the opening of the space exploration and 10 years later, on the 12th of October 1967, it was the signing of the International Space uh, Treaty for the usage of, uh, for the peaceful uses of uh, outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies. So we have this uh, timeline between the 4th of October and 12th of October every year to commemorate these two events. Uh, last year, we had more than 11,221 events in uh, 87 uh, nations. Uh, 2021, if I remember well, we had 96 nations, but 7,000 events. So we are growing. And if you follow the links here, you will see the latest. Um, uh, I mean, the previous uh, years. Uh, and uh, you can follow uh, the events online. And Evandros, uh, he's with us. Yes, he's still with us. Sorry, I didn't check the board uh, of the pre uh, people that uh, they are still on because I know he has uh, one obligation. Uh, so I thought you were leaving. So Evandros, good evening. Evandros Hello. is one of our uh, Cypriot um, uh, analog astronauts. He actually took, uh, he participated in two, in two missions to two uh, uh, analog astronaut training center, uh, centers, the Asclepios and the uh, AATC in Kragov. Uh, Evandros, would you like to say something to our guests? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's true to be sure that I'm a little bit in a rush. I will have to go in four minutes, but uh, just uh, something quick. Uh, first of all, great presentation earlier. Uh, Thank you, thank you very much um, for the presentation, Svetlana. Um, and uh, about uh, Asclepios, uh, it's a student organization that we're doing analog astronaut uh, simulations uh, once every year, made from students, uh, from students for students, both of them. So everyone's a student in their organization. And uh, the Analog Astronaut Training Center in Poland uh, for a shortcut, AATC. Um, it's uh, where me and Kostandinos both trained uh, as, an, as analog astronauts. And it's uh, you can uh, apply anytime you want. You can find uh, uh, more information uh, online. I guess we're going to talk a lot of, about it um, on the 4th uh, of October. So make sure you will be there. You will learn everything about... Uh, the center and how you can apply, how you can uh, live the experience with us and uh, how potentially you can uh, also collaborate uh, through different uh, projects and uh, ideas.
And also yeah. thank you, George, for the for this nice, uh, who you know, like uh, the Tuesday night, the talks, the presentation every every week is really interesting. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed our fundraising event on Saturday. And uh, or yes, uh, uh, I forgot to mention it on uh, last Saturday. Uh, we were honored by the Minister of uh, Innovation and the Minister of uh, Work. Uh, and by Christina Bostolo Foundation for helping them to fundraise for for their foundation uh, for 16 years, and also for our scientific work. It was held uh, in uh, at the municipal uh, gardens of Larnaca. There were more than uh, around six to seven thousand people, as they estimated, and uh, they gave us a chance to. <laughs> Get on stage and uh, they honored us. Uh, I don't have the medal here. It's at the entrance of the uh, planetarium. And um, I took the opportunity to talk a little bit about our science center. And I also took the opportunity to show, uh, to bring up on stage Evan Dross to show them that there are Cypriots also, that they have been great work abroad. And also my son and other people who also joined. Um, and they don't give them publicity, and this doesn't help these new scientists to stay in the country. I'm I'm sure my friend Paris, Panis uh, Pieri knows about this very well. He's doing his best for that. Uh, he's empowering people to uh, a new scientist. Correct, Panis. And. Um, Therefore, uh, we had the opportunity for the, we gave the opportunity to people to meet uh, our team and also have some telescope observations for fundraising uh, with just the two euros uh, each to observe either Saturn or the moon. And they were really, really impressed. And we also spread out the news, the newsletter and so on. So we have a lot of people that started from there, from this fundraising event. They became students of the Astronomy Academy, some of them. Uh, they continued to high school. They are interested uh, in, uh, in uh, physics and uh, space exploration. So 16 years, we see people growing and we see uh, how they evolve. Uh, in the field of uh, science, uh, the area of astronomy. So, uh, anyone wants to add something? Jim, Mr. Mrs. Lowell, thank you for being with us tonight as well. Cray, Hasfred. Uh, sure. uh, can I say something? Sure. Of course. Yeah, um, I'm very excited to announce that Osiris Rex successfully, uh, the sample successfully landed uh, on Earth. Yes, of course. Yeah, and um, basically the mission is continuing. It's going to visit another asteroid as we speak, so there may be further discoveries. So, yeah, that was just something exciting that happened on Sunday. Yes, to mention it. We should have mentioned it that we are, yes. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> we are oh, it was so exciting. I watched the whole thing live. <laughs> we are talking about my my stories in, in history as well. <laughs> so uh, um, we are waiting for the results. Excellent. I wanted to men mention that um, I think tomorrow um, the moon passes close to Saturn. And so it should be a nice night for observing both. Yes. Uh, Anyone uh, in the so, comments? So, so, sorry, G Jim. What's going close to Saturn? The moon. Ah, okay. Yeah. To, it's to, a conjunction. Uh, today they are very close. <laughs> yes. O already. <laughs> so most probably for Cyprus, it is they are close today and to, uh, tomorrow. And the closest was in between. <laughs> Yeah, the conjunction, I guess, is later tonight. So, yeah. No, later tonight we may observe. <laughs> Seven hours from now, it says. Um, uh, then it's closer to morning. Yeah. 
and they'll be set by then. So because of the way how I saw them, they were uh, less than six degrees next to each other. So tomorrow they will be next six degrees tomorrow evening. Yeah, I think tonight it's two two degrees and a and a little bit. So pretty close. Mm -hmm. So I added the I added the space worker uh, newsletter here to everyone. If you want me to go online and find it. And also the, no, the, the press release, and also the website for the World Space Week. I send it back, honey, to you personally as well. So, guys, thank you very much. Keep in touch. Have in mind that on the 4th, we will be here uh, online again. Please join us. Svetlana, uh, thank you very, very, very much. Uh, so, um, yeah, I have a message from Hasred here. I think it's a great idea to send information to schools. Yes, we already did, uh, both of us and the IMS, we did. Uh, some of the schools sent uh, an email back to unsubscribe from the unit, unfortunately. They, and they deleted it. Unfortunately, the headmasters and the headmistress, they don't receive it, it goes directly to the secretaries. We try to call them, they just... I talked about it uh, with the um, inspectors from the uh, Ministry of Education. They were here last week for the Action Plus uh, uh, program uh, for all schools. And uh, I mentioned it and they will send a circular to inform them that they should not subscribe and give attention to the newsletter that we are sending for all these years now, 16 years. Thank you very much uh, for sharing it, uh, Svetlana. Thank you very much. Pani, thank you, Svetlana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. She's really helping us a lot for outreach, yes. And uh, Pani, thank you very much for uh, your interest to help us and uh, circulate the newsletter and the news. So, guys, see you on uh, Wednesday, 8th, 4th of October, of October and uh, same time, 8 o'clock uh, local time. And uh, keep in touch. If you want, please send us your uh, email at the planetarium at cydanet.com.cy. Or info, info at astronomycyprus.eu as well, or at uh, cyprusplanetarium.com or cyprusobservatory.com. You can use this straight forward. Straight forward. You can see it in your screen on the text. So uh, send us your email if we don't have it in the database. I thought, Pani, we had you. But anyway, we'll add you again. And uh, Thank you for your contribution one more time. And of course, last Tuesday of next month, we will be here again with the next Science Cafe. Thank you all guys. <laughs>